Fitzgerald Campbell, working for Poverty Lane and Farnham Hill for 15 years or so. Right now we call it pruning, but I'm just dressing them up, fixing them up for the beauty contest. Fitzgerald Campbell Fitz, who's been working here since 1992, has long been our top pruner, top pruner including me. Way up top, but I see pruning, so I'm just gonna check them out. Fitz can come over and look at this tree, and I say, why in the hell did you take those two branches off? They're in important places. <laughs> the answer is usually it wasn't doing what you thought it was doing, and it needed to come. There's another old rule of pruning that every pruner I know knows, which is when in doubt, cut it out. We have 15,000 trees to prune. You can't stand and psychoanalyze every tree. You've got to cut something and move. Trees are pretty happy without humans. So the only reason to prune an apple tree is to get it to do something you want it to do. We're trying to get high quality, abundant crops from these trees. You know, this is our machine. This is, our, this is the source of all of our raw materials. To get good and consistent crops, you need a few things. You need good light penetration to the center of the tree, onto the spur leaves, which are the leaves right surrounding the fruit. If you're picking the tree with a, a ladder or picking the tree from the ground, you need to be able to get the picker's body into the tree. It's kind of a rule you have to apply. No matter how much a branch looks good or how much fruit's on it, you know, if it's in the wrong place in the tree, it's got to go no matter how much you like it. Apple trees, unlike us, would rather have their arms cut off than all of their fingers. One of the things I look for when I walk into an orchard is some biggish spots. Largest branches were removed. The idea with, with these cider trees is to get a somewhat pyramidal shaped tree with the branches getting longer and longer as you get to the bottom so as to allow sunlight to penetrate to the center of the bottom of the tree. As gone to Steve, we say call it the Christmas tree. We narrow up the top, widen the bottom as much as we can. Take the big heavy wood, like this one here. It's in the bottom, but it's shading all this right here so no other fruit limb can come in. So, we open up that. These trees, we're, we're, we're for the most part trying to run them up to about 16 feet and then we're hoping that they will settle down and stay there. These same varieties grown in other parts of the world, in England, for example, these things would be grown to 24 or 26 feet, but we don't want them that tall. The quality of the fruit is a little higher if you get better light interception on a somewhat shorter tree. Most of our trees are grown to some version of a center leader. You can see that all these trees have got a fairly strong stem going up to center. A lot of the, the leaders were snapped out by climbing porcupines in the summer about seven or eight years ago. And so we've had to kind of give them new ones by encouraging a shoot at the point of the break to take over where the, where the old leader was. You have to be able to take the long view to be able to do what we do. You know, we started growing all these cider varieties quite a long time ago, and all of our cider, and for that matter, our heirloom orchard, reflect the fact that we were one of the first to do this. If, if we could do this again, with the understanding of these varieties and their response to pruning, training, cropping, all of that stuff, <laughs> Our trees would look very different from the way they look now. With that said, we've got some very good cider fruit and some very good heirlooms coming off. Our, our 
abused guinea pig trees. 